Hey you guys, it's Britt. Tonight we're here to talk about Love Meg. Yes, again, but I had some updated info. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so I was going through Meg's Instagram story and it was just a wealth of stuff that I wanted to talk about. So here I am. First thing I want to talk about is she asked people on Instagram what their financial questions are and puts the answers behind a paywall on her lovemeg.video channel. You're asking your Instagram followers to give you questions that they might want to answer, but they have to pay you to see the answer. Secondly, and this is actually more important than number one, do not ever take financial advice from an influencer, specifically an influencer that took a loan from the government when they did not need that money especially an influencer that is shown to be greedy and money hungry. That's not someone I would ever take any advice from, but especially financial advice. No thank you. But it was rather comical to see her asking questions on Instagram and then say, these questions will be answered on the lovemeg.video site, not here on IG. Are you kidding? I am almost convinced at this point that she's just going to do the most outrageous, hypocritical, nonsensical BS because she kind of figures, okay, well, people already are calling me out, so I might as well just do what I feel like doing because she's already shown herself to be someone that does not give two shits about what her audience is saying right now. So I guess she also thinks that she's just a comedian because she posts this video. I don't know who these creators are. Bringing my yoga mat made of bubble wrap to yoga class, a million views a month ago. So these are big YouTube creators, but I don't recognize them. Right here, check it out. We also have five more exclusive videos that you haven't seen on there, so check those out. And then this week for a giveaway, we're gonna give away all of our merch, the whole collection, to three of the members on our website. And I just wanna say thank you to all the people that did sign up last week and are signing up now. Like, you're making it possible for us to be able to make videos forever and not have to rely on YouTube and whether they demonetize us or not. It's just so sick that you guys are like really doing this, but we just appreciate you a lot. There are some people complaining about the price. It's $10 a month. So just for these people, we made a coupon right here. If you use this coupon, it'll add an additional $5 to it. So you can pay $15 a month just for you. Well, if they do that, they'll get their money's worth the, the coupon. Yeah, it's worth 15 bucks. <laughs> so Meg just thinks that she is the comedian of the century. Bravo, Meg. You really showed your ass and you continue to show your ass by thinking that this is something that you are entitled to that promo code should be for you not your audience you are the one being entitled you think that you're entitled to people's money people's time people's attention people's you know all out respect for what you vacuum your bed and you clean your house people are not against paying for extra content it's the problem that your content isn't worth extra money and you're taking away the stuff that's on YouTube and putting most of it behind a paywall. And it's the same content as what was on YouTube. She does not see the issue with this and it is just almost, it, it makes me want to like gouge my eyes out with, with like how ignorant she's being. She's either being really ignorant or she just doesn't care and I can't quite figure out Maybe it's a mix of both. Someone sent her a message and said, I don't know, it's just like, how dare you stop creating nothing but free content for the world? Have a lovely rest of the day. When you wake up, that is, I'm in the UK. And she said, the ones that get it, get it. The ones that don't, don't. Here's a problem with this. She was being compensated from YouTube. So let's stop acting like she was literally making free content and not reaping the benefits of putting out content. She was being paid by YouTube AdSense. She was getting sponsorships. She was getting free product that is worth money. She was able to travel internationally and buy a massive house when 
early on in her YouTube days, she was living in a trailer and would not have been able to travel internationally because her budget didn't allow for it. I'm going to do a completely different video on remaining humble because I think that this is, when you think of a lot of different influencers, a common problem that they have is they were not able to stay humble once the YouTube money started rolling in. And it's not just influencers, it's other YouTubers and people on different social media platforms. I don't know why the being humble goes away so quickly. A lot of them are always so quick to start making that YouTube money and start showing their subscribers, look at all the stuff that I'm buying that you're not buying. Look at this big new house that we upgraded to while you're stuck in your, you know, shoebox that you live in. And I'm all for people making upgrades, but when it crosses over into this like flex culture where so much of your audience can pick up on the fact that you have lost any last bit of humble factor that you had, that's where it starts to become a problem. So I won't babble about that. That's for a different day, but let's keep going. All right, so this is where she talks about her video that went up today on lovemeg.video and she is just teaching her kids how to be vloggers. You gotta start them young. Meg gets it, put a camera in their hand as soon as they can hold it, teach them about, you know, how, how to get a crazy thumbnail, teach them all about how to take clips that will get attention. There, there's no reason for this. It, it's ridiculous. The video going up today on lovemeg.video is so fun. It's the kids' first vlog and it's the Disney cruise through their eyes like they did the majority of the filming and this is just one of love meg's content already put me to sleep i can only imagine the type of video that her kids took no offense but if you want to take offense i don't really care at this point to give your kids the camera and just teach them that filming people without consent is okay filming other kids with no consent is okay, filming in, um, you know, restaurants where people are trying to have dinner and have conversation, film them, that's okay. It is really teaching them to not have boundaries for other people that might want their peace and quiet and a little bit of privacy when they're on vacation or out to dinner or shopping at the store. Great lesson to teach them, Meg, bravo those videos that I could not post on YouTube because if you show your kids in bathing suits then you could get a strike against your channel and whenever that's a lie I'm gonna disprove it in one second but we're gonna let her keep spouting out this bullshit first whenever I upload videos like I have to actually click if there are kids in the video because it's not like suitable for advertising and stuff and I've just seen a few people say like more lies We'll get to it, hold on. Some things don't negatively affect you on YouTube and it's like, you have no idea. <laughs> like, unless you're a content creator, like you have no idea the back end. I am a content creator and we're gonna go over that in one second. For her to outright lie, it is already bad enough, the road that we've taken to get here, and now you're just gonna lie. Lie some more, give the kids the camera, Ask people for all their money. Tell them that they don't need fucking Starbucks. Like, we are on a roll. And of the things that we have to click and how it does negatively affect us. So, I'm really excited to post this video for you guys today. It's really funny. You guys are going to love it. And supposedly someone texted her and said, my channel was demonetized again. Allegedly, I wouldn't be surprised if this was her husband. And they're like texting back and forth like, okay, I really need to put this up on my story. Send me a text saying that your channel was demonetized so then I can act like it's another YouTuber who's having the same problems as I'm allegedly having. My channel was demonetized again. She replies, that's ridiculous. And one of the reasons I've made my new site so YouTube can't control me. And the other person said, I'm so pissed. I've been trying to figure it out all day and none of my contacts from last time are responding to my emails. First world problems, guys, you know? And the subtext that she put on here says, actual conversation I've had with a YouTuber and friend of mine a few days ago. And she has an extremely clean channel 
and never shows her kids or anything bad in the eyes of YouTube. There's absolutely no reason this should be happening to her channel. This is really what's going on. It's frustrating and why so many people are moving before they're being forced to. I don't even know if this is a real YouTuber, but if Meg is telling the truth here that this person is not ever showing her kids and has a really clean channel. Now I understand that some things will slip through the cracks and be demonetized when it shouldn't have been demonetized, but the timing of this is also convenient. If Meg being demonetized and so suppressed by YouTube was a real concern, I think that we would have been hearing about it for a very consistent basis. So that then when she announced this, people would have said, well, damn, like, you know, she has been complaining about this for like over a year where all her all her videos get demonetized and it's been frustrating and we've heard and heard and heard about it until we can't hear anymore. But it's the timing of everything. Now, all of a sudden you're being suppressed. Other people are being demonetized. I call it bullshit on the whole thing. So we're going to go through the self-certification process when you're posting a video to YouTube. Anytime that I want to monetize a video, I have to go through their self-certification checklist. And if anything applies to my video, then I need to select that, you know, description and it'll tell me if it's still safe for ads or if I need to take monetization off or risk YouTube demonetizing the video. And I've been um, really glad that so far I've done really well with this self-certification process. And, you know, sometimes I cuss in my videos. Sometimes I talk about stuff that can be triggering. But as a creator, it's also on your plate to make sure that you're understanding what's in your video versus what's in this self-certification process that YouTube has. And it's all part of the gig. So... Since Meg wanted to talk about swimsuits and kids being in her videos, that would fall under the adult content part of the self-certification process on the back end. So it says you can turn ads on for this content. So this is ads on, you're good. Romance or kissing, discussions of romantic relationships or sexuality without reference to intercourse fully censored nudity that is indiscernible and without intent to arouse the audience, sensual dancing in a professional setting without full or partial nudity, non-graphic sex education, or a music video containing sexual content without nudity. And it goes over some examples, but this isn't even what she's talking about. So let's go down to um, nudity. Censored nudity where nudity isn't the focus, such as scenes where characters may be nude but no nipples, but or genitalia are visible, they are completely pixelated or blurred. Blurred nudity of historical figures wearing limited clothing in educational contexts, this is all good for ads. Depictions of breastfeeding without nipples being visible. Depictions of people wearing limited clothing where the presentation isn't intended to be sexually gratifying, such as bikinis worn in the swimming pool. Good for ads. You're not going to have any issue. It also goes over um, and includes sheer or minimally covered breasts or butt um, when wearing swimwear that are both not sexually gratifying and not a focal point of the video. So Meg, I call your bluff. Your kids being on your channel is not a problem. Never was. But your kids being on your channel wearing a swimsuit while you're on vacation, not a problem. Now, you guys know I don't like kids on the channel, but since she wanted to bring it up as if it's some kind of big issue for her, we're talking about it right now, which is obviously the goal. I am not saying that I agree with the content, I'm focused on this self-certification process and the boxes that you have to check as a YouTube creator on the back end, since nobody has any idea what she goes through. Now, something that you should turn ads off for, according to YouTube, would be child nudity, not child in swimsuit, not child in, you know, shorts, 
child nudity, content showing visible privates, such as when changing a diaper or babies, swimming fully naked. So her children are not swimming naked on her channel. They are swimming in swimsuits or running around in their bathing suits. So I'm not sure where she got this info that she's having issues being demonetized because her kids are on her channel, period. That's not a problem. If she was being demonetized for her kids being in her videos, guarantee we would be hearing this from every single family vlogger. But all of a sudden, she wants to roll out this paid, you know, bullshit website. And now it's, oh, I've been demonetized. Having my kids in my videos is such a problem. Swimsuits are a problem. Everything's a problem. And that is what I call a convenient lie. Here's the thing. Meg has a very clean channel. I've said her content is really boring to me, and that's not a personal insult. If you are a former subscriber of hers or a current subscriber of hers, I consider it boring. And a lot of people consider my channel boring. It is all good. We don't have to entertain everyone who comes across our channel. But what I will say is the combination of the type of content that she makes, the fact that she's making this suppression claim against YouTube, now all of a sudden her having her kids in her videos is a problem, whereas it wasn't before. Um, and the announcement of the paid platform, this is the perfect storm of an influencer lying to their subscribers. It is very clear to see her motivation. It is very clear to see the inconsistencies and bullshit throughout her story. And if people want to pay for her website, they are allowed to do that. But they should also be educated and they should know what they're signing up for. And they shouldn't be sold this idea of, oh, it's going to be this different content because I'm being suppressed on YouTube, but it's the same content. She's just being greedy about it. It's funny for someone who hates YouTube so much, YouTube definitely put her in a very lucky position. She has had a very good change in her quality of life based on what I've seen. And it is just funny to see her completely turn on the platform that made her who she is. So I did want to share this. As soon as I heard her lying about the, you know, kids being a problem on her channel, I knew that I had to make this video because, you know, you YouTubers and influencers, they, they lie all the time, some more than others. But when it's such a blatant lie that can be disproven, I have a big problem with that. So I did want to share my thoughts. Again, if you're going to pay for her service, then just know what you're signing up for and know that you are supporting an influencer that doesn't give a shit about you or her community. She cares about what you're giving to her. And if you're okay with that, you're okay with that. So either way, that's going to be it for now. I have a video coming on Erin Williams. She's doing the same thing and I've reviewed her content. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.